Thank you, and good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Nifty South Regional Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge. My name is Zachary Moskowitz, and I'm a Nifty alum from 2023, uh, where I was one of the top finalists here at last year's Regional Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge and a competitor in the New York competition. It's honestly a little weird to be up here on this side of it now. Um, I'm honored to be here as the MC for this competition. My business idea last year was Easy Form, which is a fast and efficient way to fill out your forms. I was honestly put into the entrepreneurship class to fill a free period. I didn't really want to do it, but the nifty curriculum really motivated me, and I quickly became interested in the class, and my teacher, Mr. Harding, who's sitting over there, was a huge inspiration to me. Um, but the thought never dawned on me that I would once end up in New York pitching um, and then standing on a stage here uh, pitching my business idea. So I'm so excited to be here, and I hope uh, you are all as thrilled as I am to take part in this competition. It's one of the cornerstones of the Nifty program, the business plan competition. If you're here today, chances are you're pretty familiar with the entrepreneurial mindset, uh, which is the success of our country's economy and our communities and most of all young people like me. Nifty knows that preparing us to be career ready and future focused as students, entrepreneurs, and engaged employees helps us to recognize opportunities when faced with obstacles. The entrepreneurial mindset, ignited first by our nifty teachers, places us on a bold path of discovery and achievement, causing a ripple effect that positively impacts everyone. That's what these competitors and their dreams represent. Whatever path has brought you here today, I want you to know that everyone in this room has the power to transform the lives of young people through entrepreneurship and has the has the power to transform the lives of young people through entrepreneurship, including our generous supporters. Nifty is incredibly grateful to the sponsors of this challenge, including our presenter, EY, and our associate sponsors, the City Foundation, Santander, PayPal, and Shopify. Can everyone uh, lead me in an applause to thank them? I'd also like to thank the wonderful Nifty teachers and school partners, as well as business coaches, classroom volunteers, judges, family, and friends that provide advice and encouragement to all the Nifty students here. I remember the support that I received through my Nifty experience that helped me get where I am today. Again, I never thought that I'd be standing up here emceeing the competition. And that same support to this year's Young Entrepreneurs does not go unnoticed, so thank you. And finally, this event, and all we do would not be possible without the commitment, guidance, and support from the members of the South Regions Advisory Board, whom you'll find listed in the program. Please join me in recognizing all these invaluable contributions to our Nifty community. So today is the culmination of many long hours of hard work from our finalists. Finalists, I have walked that same path that brought you here, and I know all the work you have put into your plans. It's, it's a lot of work, so I feel y'all. And no one knows these businesses better than you do, and we all cannot wait to hear your pitches. Before you begin, just take a deep breath. I'm going to take one now, too, probably. And know that we, are, we all believe in your power and your potential, and that we hope you leave here today knowing how amazing you are and how much you inspire everyone here. Remember, it's not always winning that pushes us to greatness. Challenges spark innovation, and you never know what tomorrow will hold. So no matter what the outcome of the competition, be proud of what you have done and enjoy the applause. And congratulations on being here. So this is probably kind of a rhetorical question, but is everyone ready? Yeah? So here's where it gets really exciting. To judge the challenge, we have an esteemed panel of experts who have volunteered their time. Please help me welcome Nifty 22 alumnus and founder of T-Kicks, Alberto Arroyo. <laughs> Senior manager in EY's Dallas practice, Lincoln Cahoon. Small business, community banking, and lending production manager at Bank of America, Sean Cross. President and CEO of Vista Bank, John Steinmetz. And product area lead for Fidelity Brokerage Technology, Pushkala Venkataraman. <laughs> Judges, thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise. We have every confidence that our finalists will truly impress you. We do not envy our job. Now, 
for a brief uh, review of the rules. Each presenter will have exactly seven minutes to present their pitch deck to the judges. Our timer will show a green card when there are five minutes left, a yellow card when there is one minute left, or what, yeah, when there is one minute remaining, and then if the time expires before they finish, a red card will be shown and the tone will be wrong. That, that tone. After each presentation, the judges will have three minutes to ask questions, and again, a yellow card will be shown when there's one minute left, and the red card when there, when the red card and the bell will be rung when time is up. We will provide a minute between presentations for our judges to make necessary notes and record their scores. And with five teams presenting, we'll also pause briefly after the first three presentations for a short break for coffee and to help our judges get caught up with their scoring. I'm really excited to announce that the third place winner from today's competition will leave with $500, while our second place winner receives $1,000, and our first place winner will take home $1,500. In addition, our two runner-ups will receive gift cards of $100 each. All right, so everyone ready to get started? All right, so let's start the challenge. Please welcome our first presenter from Career Institute North with their pitch for Bra Physics, Brihana Herrera and Denamari Martinez-Reyes. Good morning, judges. Good morning, audience. My name is Ana Mari Martinez. And my name is Diana Herrera. We are a partnership. We are from Thomas Jefferson High School and Career Institute North. Our company name is Bra Physics, and our slogan is Wear Your Comfort. Judges, our target market has a problem with the perfect fit. What do we mean by the perfect fit? We found that 85% of women do not wear the right size of bra. 73% of women are embarrassed to talk about it and 53% of women feel uncomfortable. For example, Ms. O had a bad experience for 40 years because she didn't know how to find her ideal bra. That's why we are creating a business where teens and women will experience what it feels like to be taken care with no worry of the dreaded thoughts of what size should they get. That's why we are providing classes online, measuring each woman's torso to customize the perfect fit, to restore dignity to teens and women's self-esteem in creating a sensitive buying program. Our underlying magic is being empathetic towards women's physical and emotional experiences with their bra. We are a full service business. We give educational classes, we custom fit you, and we also give you a dose of encouragement as a part of the experience. We also provide the youth reversal effect. How do we provide the youth reversal effect, you will ask? Well, we need to look back into our company name. Our company name is Bra Physics. Why we chose Bra Physics? Well, to make a bra, you need to solve some physics problems. A bra needs enough tension in the elastic band to produce the effect of a cantilever. A cantilever is a bend that support bridges and lift them up. Your bra should be firm enough to produce the effect of a cantilever, which causes the youth reversal effect by wearing the right size of bra. The total USA population is about 331.9 million. Our target market population is 50%, and our market size is 165 million of women. Out of this percentage, 72% of women wear a wireless bra, and 70% of women wear an underwire bra. That's why my partner and I have come to the conclusion to focus on just two styles for now. During a typical week, 61% of women between the ages of 18 to 65 and older wear a bra every day. That's why, judges, this business is a necessary to all women to help them find their right fit. This is our marketing plan. For our awareness, we are using flyers, social media, and radio public announcements. For key metrics, we are creating a podcast with 200 new feature listeners each month that eventually will increase to 1,000 in four months. For our purchase, we're using self-promotion such as coupons, loyalty membership programs, and word of mouth discounts. We're also giving 25% discount for referral and 50% discount for referral if a client joins the loyalty membership program. For our orientations, we are using social media stories from our customers and creating a customer's appreciation day. We're also giving a Google customer's review for, for customers to rate them from one to five and also share their experiences with other people. This is our competitive analysis. Based in size, Bra Physics is offering sizes from 28A to 60A, while Victoria's Secret is just offering sizes from 38 to 44D. 
and schemes is offering 38 to 46 age. Based on service, we want to support all teens and women through the design and cost of fitting, from the petite to the plus size, we will travel to the client's home for fitting. While Victoria's Secret, 57% of the customers rate them at a one for customer service. Customer comments went to, customer service is just horrible, a lot of run around. While Schemes, 27% of the customers rate them at a one also. Customer comments went to, processing time is noted, one to two days, seven days later is still processing. What a disappointment. Based in price, Bra Physics is offering our bras at 54 with 20 cents and up, while Victoria's Secret is offering the bras at 49.99 to 69.99, and Skims is offering the bras at 50, 44 to 60 dollars. Our qualifications: We both study in Career Institute North. I am so thankful to have Brianna as my partner because she is very creative. She has such an empathy and she has great communication skills. Yep. She's also certified in NOSHA 5 and she has an award as the most professional student. As Amamani said, we both study at Career Institute North. She takes Architecture Design 1 and Entrepreneurship 1. I'm so grateful to have Amamani as a partner. She's just visionary. She has the future in her eyes. She's empathetic and kind towards older people and she's so friendly. She also received two hours. She's, she has been certified in OSHA 5 and also received the award of the most professional student. This is our cost structure. This is, a, this is a description of all the expenses and materials of one unit. Based on the prices of one of the materials, we have come to a selling price. Each bra will cost $54.20. This is our current status and future plan. For our current status, we are creating a podcast, providing classes online, make home visits for feeding, open a new savings account to help grow the business, find a mentor, host community class once a month, and we want to donate to the women who have breast cancer. For our future plans, we want to locate a building to open store in, work, in workspace area. We want to expand our land for bras. We're going to look for investors. We want to build a customer base through marketing events, also taking classes on bra construction, and we want to partner with a nonprofit. We also want to make bras for women who have breast cancer. This concludes our presentation. You can find us on social media as Bra Physics. And keep in mind that we don't sacrifice your comfort. Do you have any questions? Great presentation, uh, such a unique idea. Judges, please take it away. Fantastic job. Um, it was a pleasure to listen to you today and good luck. Um, what has been some early feedback you've gotten? Have you see, uh, gotten any feedback and what's uh, that looking like? Yes, we have made two prototypes. In each, we measured two of our friends and they try it on and they give us feedback of how the thread feels, how the elastic feels, in the hook and eyes and everything, but we want to make changes. That's why we couldn't bring it today, because we're making them unique and more better. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to say nice job, great presentation. Um, piggybacking on what she said, um, you said about 53% feel uncomfortable. So how did you determine what type of materials would be the best? Oh, we went to a warehouse where they sell thread. They, that's why we came up with the price of $54.20, because their materials are a little bit high, so because of their quality. So we want to go and continue going to the warehouse because we know that the quality is high. Does the cost associated with home visits concern you? No. We want to women feel comfortable and also be taking, feel that we take care of them. We're going to go with our tia so they can take care of us while we're in their house. Yeah. Great job. Thank you. All right. Thank you uh, for the question period. We're now going to give our judges a little time to mark their scores and jot down any notes.
And now for our second finalist, presenting their business plan for Detect Array. Please welcome Abril Cardona from Nimitz High School. Good morning, judges. This, um, currently, I'm, I have been in high school for four years now. And it wasn't until my fourth year that I, didn't, I, could feel, I could feel like I could be the next victim of a school shooting. And that is because of all of the problems being faced with school shootings around me. Uvalde and Bowie High School, they were too close to my home. There has been an increase of school shootings. There has been 389 school, sh school shootings since Columbine. There has been an increase in smuggled guns. There has been 269 smuggled guns, with the youngest being four years old. There has been an increase of loss of young lives. In Columbine, there was 13. In Uvalde, there was 21, with their age ranges being 9 to 11 years old. And in Sandy Hook, there was 26 loss of young lives, with their age range being 6 to 7 years old. Kids shouldn't be losing their lives due to lack of security in schools and because of, of metal detectors that are now to be today. Another problem that is being faced on the market is that there has been, is that current metal detectors now have a bulky design. They're not, they're not noti they're noticeable, they're not specific, and they're easily able to be spotted. The value proposition that I have is that Detector A is an innovative door frame. As you can see by my, the metal detector I have, Detector A will be able to be attached to pre-existing door frames. Detector A will have a unique value proposition of having AI technology. It will be able to detect guns specifically, and it will be able to secure and be reliable, making sure that no guns are being unchecked and being able to be smuggled. This is how Detector A will work. When a culprit is being caught smuggling specific metals like carbon-based steel and alloys, when they walk straight through the door, Detector A with its small pinhole camera will take a photo of that person. It will send it directly through the, the iOS and Android app and letting know specific people like security guards and administrators of what that culprit looks like, their identification using the school's database if they are a teacher or a student, and it will try to map out that person's identification, their name, their grade level, the map, of where they're supposed to be at of that trigger warning, and it will use AI to say specific keywords like the auditorium and the library to better identify that person. So that security guards and administrators can take that person into custody, follow their protocols, and continue with that. Our primary target audience is educational institutions because school shootings are occurring at educational institutions. Our secondary target audience is large corporations, one world trade centers, and financial institutions like banks that need the extra security that with Detector A, we can provide that. Our marketing plan is that right now, we are, we, I want to spread awareness by having designated pitch meetings with school districts and principals. We want to give out our business cards to let know them about our upcoming product. And for purchasing of our product, they can purchase our product through a specific website so they can, so they can buy our product. They can customize their door frames to, to fit their school district's color schemes. We also provide bundling so that they can buy our product and to continue to have more because we know that, we ha that school districts have more than one door entry. We also plan to have running ads through social media and for our rentation, we, we plan for the future to have new upgrades for our product line like not only detecting knives, detecting guns, but also to be detecting knives and to continue to have AI and new technology updates. Our competitive analysis is that right now our competitors are any are any metal detectors that are currently at schools. Our, our priorities are uh, big time battery and metal defenders that cost $2,399. Right now, the problem is that they're a bulky design. They're not specific to any guns being detected. There's no embedded camera and there's no tracking after the culprit is entering through the door. With Detector A, our price is $7,500 for five detectors. It is an innovative door frame, and we will ensure that the culprit is being tracked, that there is no more breaches, and that we have an iOS and Android sponsored app. My qualifications as a student is that I am real. I have a 3.89 GPA. I'm a high school senior. I'm top of my class, and I'm a DECA national competitor, Nifty Entrepreneurship, and I have four years of business classes. I also plan to pursue a bachelor's degree in marketing, and I'm also certified in Microsoft Word, G Suite, and Google Analytics. My cost structure for Detector A is that my definition of one unit is five Detector A's for one bundle. Its starting price is $7,500. So for each detector, we, we sell for five. We have five. My total COGS is, my total cost of uh, materials is $20,000, is, is $20.50. That is for paying for, to package Detector A, 
for our product and also for our cost of laborers. Our total COGS is $552, and our cost margin is $6,948. In order for us to break even each month, we have to sell eight units of our detector rate bundles in order to make our break even point. My variable marketing expenses is $20.50, but that is for materials for packaging and shipping out our metal detectors. And our fixed expenses is $53,075 in order for us to pay for rent, which would account for our warehouse to manufacture our business and also for web hosting, app fees, insurance, and internet. My current status of my business is that I'm currently in the concept stage. This is my second year of Detector A. We have created two sketches and two prototypes. So this is a continuous business of continuing to research better uses for our product and continuing to update our prototype and sketches to better fit our problems. Our plans for growth is that we plan to grow from not only from word of mouth but from referrals where school districts um, refer us to other school districts so that they can adapt to our protocols and for us to, in the future, get a patent team, a manufacturing team, to start production of our product straight away. We also want for the future for school districts to adapt to better uh, protocols like having detector rate in our schools. And for us to expand our franchise from not only detecting guns, like I stated before, but also for detecting knives. Thank you for listening. My name is Zabril Cardona. I am the CEO of Detectoray, and our model is we continue to strive to detect, secure, and protect. And you can find us on our website at www.detectoray.org and also on our Instagram. Thank you. Great presentation. Judges, please take it away. You did a great job. Um, Thank you. One question is just around funding. I think you've been able to lower the price point a bit, but I think some of the challenges for schools are just being able to afford with all the points of entry? Have you thought through that and just alternative ways for schools to be able to have it better? Yes, um, we thought about that. We changed the price point recently from 5000 to 7500 but that is for just so that we make sure that the profit of each of our metal detectors, because our price would be 1000 per metal detector, but now it's 1500 But unlike our competitors, they're only getting one metal detector. We provide a value bundle so that when those school districts do purchase our bundles, they have more than one detector, so that in each door entry, they're secured. So we, we hope that that will be more cost efficient for, that, for those school districts. Can you talk a little bit about um, the idea behind, uh, behind the technology that you will be using? Uh, it's, a t it's a terrific idea, I mean, Thank real you. problem, but what's the technology that you will use behind it? The technology that's gonna be used behind it would be AI technology, and we are also trying to use um, Bluetooth connection because we do plan to have a sponsored app, so it would be updated to like better protocols because our current competitors don't have an embedded camera, as I stated before, or also a sponsored app. So there's no specific tracking. And when that person does come through the door, who they won't be able to know beforehand straight away if that culprit is. Okay, thanks. So would you have to do um, different software updates yes. at different points? And how would you determine when you would need to update the software? I guess it would come throughout like uh, a school district if they have any problems being faced. But we continue to strive to be to be uh, latest with our new technology. You know, making sure that we're not lacking any errors or anything in ours. But we do ensure that we not only update our product but update our product line. The AI would work is that it works hand in hand with the app that we use. The AI would help with within the app, it would be able to use keywords that will help with security guards to know specifically where that person is beforehand. Like saying like cafeteria, the auditorium, it will immediately tell them about that and it will all be within the Bluetooth app. You did a really good job. Um, you. Have you, will, will the equipment be integrated with current uh, surveillance systems within the school districts? Yes, um, we plan for our product for the pinhole camera for it to be able to connect with pre-existing cameras in school districts. 
So I'll be able to wiretap and continue within the app to uh, continue to work hand in hand about where that person is surveillance all throughout the, the school district, the school environment. Thank you. All right, let's please, let's please give a round of applause. Judges, please take a moment to finish recording your scores. And now, for our third finalist, presenting their business, their business plan for Peyton's Pastries, please welcome Peyton Bernstein from Hillcrest High School. Hi. Um, my name is Peyton Bernstein. I'm here with Peyton's Pastries. I uh, currently study at Hillcrest High School. Um, and my business is an online baking business in, that currently sells towards high schoolers. So what is our problem? Uh, our, problem feel is, our problem is that oftentimes uh, people are wanting to find baking, baked goods and other pastries for a low selling price that are good quality and they are unable to find those. And another problem is that Oftentimes, people want to help out around their community, but don't know how to and don't know the best way to. The Trevor Project is a 24-7 access suicide hotline for, that specifically targets queer youth. In 2020, they were able to help over 150,000 queer youth who debated suicide and who were um, dealing with self-harm ideation. So the value proposition. Payton's Pastry strives to provide the best quality and best value baked goods and to do good not only for the environment, but also for the community. So the underlying magic. Everything is made from scratch. Uh, there's fundraising, advocating for, uh, for a charity, advocating for queer youth who struggle with suicide. And in the past, we've raised over $10,000 for various charities. So the target market. Uh, the total population in Dallas is about 1,288,000. The target market size is, a million, uh, is 1 million and 1,000, with our market size being a little over 800,000. So our target customer is what I like to call the millennial mom. <laughs> it is someone located in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It can be any, our age currently is around 16 to 50 years old. Any gender, any race, they want to have, they believe that queer kids need the help and they like to support small businesses. And when they do support small businesses, they often donate to charity and purchase a lot. <laughs> so the marketing plan. Currently right now, I am using social media to actively grow my business, uh, with, which has garnered around 50,000 impressions on social media. Um, for a purchase, I want to be able to sample and go to different events like uh, uh, food markets and things like that, which can garner around 100 new sales per customer. And for a retention rate, I want to focus again on social media sampling, but also add in a loyalty program or rewards, which can garner a 10% referral rate. So the competitive analysis. At Hokers High School, we have a, another small business called Veya's Creations, and then also focusing on Sprinkles Cupcakes, which is widely known, and Small Cakes, which is also widely known. And Veya's Creations, their price is they target towards high schoolers, so everything that they make is priced very low. Sprinkles Cupcakes, they have some affordable things, but it is tar targeted towards the higher paying customer. And Small Cakes has a low price for good quality goods, along with other bundles for customers. The location of Vegas Creations is, it is online, but they also uh, sell around Hillcrest High School. Sprinkles Cupcakes is a national chain spanning nine states with 23 locations, but they are focused, again, towards the higher paying customer. Small Cakes is an international chain. Uh, their slogan is, uh, taking all, is like worldwide cupcake domination, um, and they're located in all kinds of areas. 
And then a reputation like Vea's creations is they're very often talked about and spread around social media. Sprinkles Cupcakes, as you know, Candace Owens was on not only Shark Tank, but also other various uh, baking shows. And Small Cakes is kind of lesser known, but they do have things like the Cup Shake, which was my favorite thing as a kid, that um, is a cupcake and a milkshake combined, which I never th thought of that. Um, but our unfair advantage is, is we are marketed low towards high schoolers, but with social media, we're able to transfer those prices to a wider range of people, like someone who is a, another business owner that might be friends with my mom. Uh, and we are online, however, we are sold in the school, that is our delivery process, and we do have referrals along with, again, our growing social media following. So my qualifications. I've had 14 years of experience in the kitchen. Now, as a 17-year-old, uh, that seems like a lot. I was baking at a small age with my mom. Uh, I've run a fundraiser for childhood cancer research for five years. In 2018, I received a $500 grant, which I was able to uh, flip over six times for two separate charities, both fundraising for childhood cancer research. And I've worked with multiple char charities for various of causes. So our cost structure. For the purpose of this presentation, I wanted to focus specifically on one dozen cupcakes. Now, for our variable expenses, you don't need to buy a dozen eggs for one, do for one dozen cupcakes. So for a price per unit with a total of material expenses would equal about $5.35. Our uh, cost of labor is about 40 cents per unit with a set aside donation per purchase of $10 for the Trevor Project. Our fixed expenses of certifications of my home kitchen uh, per month is $13.50. With our, so our, our total COGS will be $15.75. Our contribution margin will be $14.25. Totaling it all, our break-even point is one unit. So the current status. I'm actively growing the social media presence. I am bringing samples in to grow a larger market and working on getting reviews from, and responses from customers. And also in the planning period to do this charity fundraiser. In the 2024-2025 school year, I want to host that charity project for the Trevor Project. By 2030, I'm hoping to move into a place with, bigger, with a bigger kitchen and, more, and better equipment. By 2035, I want to grow the business even more to an even larger scale and hopefully have a few employees to do things with other various charities. I want to collaborate with charities like the OK2BX Foundation, which is a very close and personal one, and St. Baldrick's Cancer Foundation. And that is Peyton's Pastries. Uh, you can find us on Instagram or, yeah. <laughs>Great presentation. Judges, please take it away. Fantastic idea again. Um, enjoyed the humor in your presentation as well. Um, in terms of future plans, um, what are you thinking of? Um, are you going to stick to cupcakes? Are you going to be uh, diversifying a little bit? Have you given any thought to it? Yeah. So actively, right now, I have a variety of different menu options. For the purpose of the presentation, I wanted to spe specifically focus on the one dozen cupcakes, but I offer things like selling cupcakes either half a dozen or just one. I also sell cookies and brownies and whole entire cakes as well. Uh, you mentioned a loyalty program. Can you speak more on that like in the future? Yeah, so in the process, right, I'm currently building a website. So my hope is, I don't know if you remember kind of a while ago, you were given like a physical card where you hole punched every like 10 things, every 10 purchases you got a free thing. I'm kind of hoping to build off of that, whether that is digital or go back to the old ways of having that card and you stamp it. But um, that is my hope to do something like that, uh, where every specific amount of purchases you get, um, like whether that's a free baked good or a t-shirt of uh, the foundation that I work with. Thank you. Great job, quick question just on economics. It, with, with the pricing challenges, how are you handling that? I mean, even just if you're 
if your slide's six months old, eggs probably have gone up since then. And so with pricing pressure, how are you going to address that going forward? Yeah, so with the pricing, there is a, in the presentation, uh, you can, oh, go back to that. So uh, the monthly break even is uh, with the uh, contribution margin and the cost of the fixed expenses, the break even is essentially technically 1.95, which means there is a little bit of wiggle room like the prices of the eggs, they go up. So there is a little bit of wiggle room to maintain within that break even point. All righty, let's give Peyton a round of applause. Thank you, Peyton, and thank you, judges. Before our final two presenters, we'll all take a seven minute break. Feel free to grab some more food, a drink, and visit one of the student expo tables that you might have missed before we began. And probably get some coffee, too. I know everyone's going to need some of that. Thank you. All right, welcome back, everyone. Let's jump in. To present their business plan for Style Selector, please welcome Ladias Martinet from the School of the Highly Gifted. Imagine this. It's the first day of school, and you have no idea what to wear. You're in a rush to find the perfect outfit, but you don't know whether people will like it or not. Insert style selector. By using the outfit generator, you were able to find an outfit that you really liked, and think many others will too. My name is Lodius Martinet, and this is Style Selector. One main problem about America is that 61% of Americans aged 14 to 24 years old admitted that they don't know what to wear on a daily basis. By using Style Selector's Alpha Generator, we can offer them an easy solution to this problem and inspire new styles so that they can feel comfortable in what they're wearing. Well, another fact that really shocked me was that on average, only about 10% of clothing goes worn in someone's closet. By using Style Selector, we can include these into the generations to make sure everyone gets all their clothes and doesn't go to waste. Our value proposition is that by using Style Selector, we promise an easy to use solution to not knowing what to wear. Our outfit generator can inspire new styles with the push of a button. And if a new user can get up to three free generations per day and access to an article showing current fashion trends. But why should you use our app? The first step is to add your clothes. And there is a video there that's not playing, but it would show you what, how to do that. Uh, but once you've taken a picture, you can go to the Generate section of the app. And once you've found the clothes that you like to wear, you can leave your house with confidence. Our main target market is 14 to 24 year olds, which I have further broken down into three smaller markets, the first of which is middle schoolers. I believe that they'll mainly use the app in order to generate outfits and save outfits that they enjoy wearing. The next the target market is high schoolers. I believe that they'll mainly use our app in order to find new fashion trends to fit in among their clicks. I feel like they'd also generate new outfits and find outfits others have generated using similar clothing. The last target market is college slash university students. I believe that they'll mainly use the app to generate clothing and find outfits that they've found others have generated using similar outfits. The, in order to find my market size, I took the total size of the US, about 330 million. To, uh, to find the total market size, I found the target market size, I took the total number of 14 to 24 year olds, about 75 million. And in order to find my market size, I took the total number of 14 to 24 year olds in the DFW area, about 316,000. For my marketing plan, I'd like to use YouTube ads as my main channel, with ads directed at people who actively view fashion content. I'd also like to make Instagram and X, formerly called Twitter, posts regarding the functions and uses of the app. In order to increase purchases, I'd like to give out discount codes to influencers showcasing the app and have sales around holidays such as Christmas and Easter. As you can see in my key metrics, I expect about 3,000 new users per month. I expect about 30% of referrals to purchase a subscription and about 90% of all users to stay on the app. Oh, so we have a free version and a $3.99 subscription. You Look Fab is totally free, but with advertisements. And You Camp Perfect is a paid subscription 
for $7.99. Our solution is making outfit ideas by using MIT App Inventor's components. You Look Fab promotes styles from other companies, which are often very skewed considering they're sponsored and paid for. You Can't Perfect uses AI to create outfits, which is our unfair advantage. We don't use AI, which commonly mistakes other items in the picture for clothing, especially the background, which you'll always have. Our main feature is that we generate clothing from your closet into outfits. You Look Fab is that they show styles promoted from other companies, which, as I already mentioned, is usually sponsored and paid for. You Can't Perfect has different styles that the AI chooses to generate from. But why am I qualified to run this business? Well, I'm a SkillsUSA member, which is an organization that promotes professionalism and business readiness. I have also taken the OSHA 10-hour general industry certification, and my top EMD is opportunity recognition. This is my cost structure. The definition of one unit is one access-based subscription. I decided to sell it for about $3.99, and my total fixed expenses are $2,115. 1,320 of those are for maintenance and bug fixes, 45 for server hosting, and about 750 for marketing. My total cost is $1.20 because the Google Play Store takes a $1.20 commission off of those sales. When using the formula, which leaves me with a contribution margin of $2.79, that means that I'll have to sell 759 units in order to break even each month. In my first year, I expect about $875 in profits. In my second, I expect about $3,450. And in my third year, I want to upgrade my software. In order to grow, I'd like to introduce a referral program so that users can get free premium for about two weeks by inviting their friends. I'd like to create a website to become more accessible to other people, considering not everyone has an Android phone. And for philanthropy, I'd like to donate money to Souls for Souls, which is an organization that gives out clothes to economically challenged individuals. I'd also like to give out free and discounted uh, subscriptions to those who cannot afford them regularly. Thank you for listening. My name is Lodius Martinet. You can email any extra questions at styleselector0 at gmail.com. And there's, I have a YouTube channel at style underscore selector. Remember, when you don't know what to wear, Style Selector is there. Great presentation. What a unique idea. Judges, your three-minute question and answer period begins now. Great presentation. Loved Thank your you. energy um, question. So if I'm taking, say, pictures of what's in my closet, let's say I don't like the clothes that's in my closet, and um, I know you're going to talk about trends. What your app maybe tell me where I could go buy some of them, you know, fashionable um, items? Yeah. Great question. That is actually going to be in the article that we'll have updated weekly and the best places comparing prices and quality of the clothing goods in order to make sure that you can find the best quality that you would want to wear on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned a subscription. What would be the perks of purchasing that subscription? A great question. So the perks are that you get unlimited subscriptions each day. You get a calendar to see to plan clothing that you want to wear on to the future, and you also uh, you also get to see uh, an extra like article showcasing the best spots to get all the clothing items that aren't shown in the normal subscription or article. I'm sorry. I loved your tagline. Um, is there a reason you don't have AI, or is that in a future plan? Uh, yes, actually. It was in um, the unfair advantage. Uh, it commonly mistakes other items in the picture for articles of clothing. Like, let's say I had a blue shirt, and I put it on a white background. It might take the white background as, say, a blue and white striped shirt, and it very commonly mistakes that for another item which wouldn't look as well together. Great job. Um, as a not so young adult, I still don't know what to wear every day. But um, <laughs> will your app allow for the ability to sort of tell you where I'm planning on going to help me choose what I'm wearing? 
Uh, that is actually a feature I'm currently working on right now. I've gotten feedback from my teacher and some other classmates about so, uh, in implementing that. I'm currently working on a way to find that with MIT App Inventor, considering it's a very limited source to code an app. But uh, when I upgrade to a website, I believe that will be much easier to come by, and I'll be able to actually implement that. This is less of a question and more of a comment. Um, you're an incredible presenter, and you've done clearly your, your research. Have you considered putting any other uh, marketing dollars behind uh, the actual online stores? Um, I have considered that, and I want to focus that more on the future. As of right now, I'm just trying to work on getting the app totally 100% finished and rolling it out to customers, and then I'll start working on the extra stuff like that. All right, let's please give Ladias a round of applause. We'll now uh, give our judges a little more time to mark their scores and jot down any notes. And now, for our fifth finalist, presenting their business plan for Uni Design, please welcome Angel Alvarez, also from the Bryce Career Institute South. Well, first of all, I want to go ahead and thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this amazing opportunity right here. Without him, I wouldn't be here. Hello, my name is Angel Alvarez. I'm a freshman at David W. Carter High School, and I'm CEO and founder of Uni Designs. We are graphic design. Now, the problem and opportunity that I'm addressing is that 80% of a small upcoming company need design in their branding. They need this design because it's the foundation of their business. It's the trademark of their business, and it's what makes you different from everybody else. 81% of business organizations use graphic design in various formats. So use formats include Photoshop, Illustrator. I don't really use Canva, but Canva and design as well. But brand design can sometimes be very unaffordable. So here's where I come in. I bring quality and affordability to the table. So on the left-hand side, I have a, a, um, a Spider-Man thumbnail that I've made for a client on YouTube. And I make sure that they're vibrant and colorful. Um, he has a video right here that he's going to be able to show you. Uh, all he has to do is click the plus button, and then you can pass it down, and that's the process of how I make it. Oh, just uh, click it, just tap it. But that's going uh, affordability as well. So I have a glasses company, Vizar, for a friend that I've made, and this is a logo that I've created for him. Nunderlight Magic. So usually the video would be right here, but you know, after, after the presentation, I could show you the video right there. And then right here, my designs bring in the money. So as you can see, I have a couple of designs right here that I've made for YouTube, 288 views, 234, 418, and 156. Because you know I, I base my designs on being colorful, vibrant, to where people on YouTube when you're scrolling, you only get a seven sec, you only get seven seconds to look. So you got to make those seven seconds count. You know the target market, the industry name. I work in the graphic design industry. The annual industry is 48.1 billion. In my demographics. I'm targeting small business owners between the ages of 25 to 45 who have limited marketing budgets, really targeting all ages, but those are the main ages. Geographics of the United States. I plan on going all over the world, but for now, just focusing on the United States. My psychographics are entrepreneurs who have a desire to grow their business and understand the importance of marketing. And my buying patterns are people who may purchase tools to market their business, web design, social media, social media and marketing, social media marketing. My channels. I plan, on promoting, I plan on promoting my business on YouTube, Twitter, Discord, and Instagram, Twitter known as X, uh, Awareness Digital Marketing as in Behance, which is a portfolio site where I could showcase my work to clients. You can purchase my work through Twitter, Twitter, unidesigns.co, and Instagram. And I plan on keeping my client retention by providing clear communication and exceed their expectations. Competitive analysis. So I have two business I decided to compare myself to. First one is God Designs. He has vibrant colors that I incorporate before and after images of his thumbnail work. He's an experienced designer who has a good customer following, and his portfolio has generated over 100 million YouTube views. DM Designs could go by Demir Designs. The work is lively, yet lacks in quality, a consequence of being produced on a phone. So before I started working on a computer on Photoshop, I used to produce my work on a cell phone, and it was kind of hard because no matter how much work or effort you put into it, the work, the, the quality still comes out lower than you credit it on. 
Uh, customers are pleased with the quality of work. However, the designer often, to fail to, often fails to establish a clear deadline. So, you know, even though his work is good, sometimes he doesn't set clear deadlines and doesn't give a clear day on which he's going to finish the work. Portfolio has remarks from the True ZT and other influential content creators. So even though he doesn't have, he doesn't set a deadline, his work is respected by the community. Uh, Uni Designs, which is me, high quality work created using Photoshop, a novice gra graphic designer being guided by a CSYNC graphic designer, and more than 60% of my clients have come back for additional projects. And my portfolio as of right now is steadily growing. My qualifications. I'm a current entrepreneur student at CI Sales. I've been designing and creating graphics since I was nine, so this is a passion, and I, enjoy, I really enjoy doing this. I'm a construction pathway student. I'm bilingual. I speak English and Espanol, and I play second in the Price Career Institute Entrepreneur Pitch Competition, and I'm employed at a major fast food franchise. Uh, my definition of one unit is one thumbnail design. My materials just include my pencil and paper, which are $5. My fixed expenses include to a total of 140, which include my software, which is 60, which that includes Photoshop, Illustrator, the advertising, which is 50, which I'll be promoting on Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and my business insurance, which is 30, in case my, something happens with my laptop. My selling price is $25. My cost of aerial materials, which include my pencil and paper, is $5. My cost of labor is $14.50. My total cost of goods and services is $15, is $19.50. And my contribution margin, which is my profit, is $5.50. For me to break even, I will need to sell 26 units. You know, my current status and future plans, I plan on the future and providing bundles. So let's say you want to buy 10 thumbnails, then I will, that would be 100. You know, one thumbnail is 25, but if you want to buy 10, that would be 100. You want to buy more, so I plan on providing bundles. I plan on having a full functioning website in the future, and I plan on providing small clinics for business owners who want to learn how to market their business. Plans for philanthropy. I plan on mentoring the youth at the, uh, I, I plan on mentoring the youth in graphic design at the elementary school I attended. So I attended Mark Twain, you know, shout out to Mark Twain out there. Um, you know, I plan on providing, you know, lessons to them because, you know, I grew up with this passion and I'm still growing up and I just love designing. And, you know, it's just something that takes my mind off everything. So I will plan on providing that for students at yeah, Mark Twain. And I plan on donating a small portion of my earnings to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. My name is Angel Alvarez. And I am Uni Designs. Thank you for your time. Oh, yeah, I got it. First of all, again, great job, great presentation. So, with Gob Designs having 100 million views, how do you plan on tapping into some of their market share and bringing So, you know, they're, they're focused only on gaming, right? So, I'm gonna be focused on gaming as well. But I'm gonna focus on I'm expand. I'm gonna expand my business. So I'm gonna also do logos, posters, business cards, you know, anything marketing, promotional-wise. I'm gonna be working and helping out with. What's going to be your um, differentiator? I mean, your passion is very apparent, mm -hmm. right? Um, but this is a very competitive industry. How are you going to stay relevant, and how are you going to differentiate yourself? Connections. So, you know, communicating with people, having an impact as well. You know, I'm gonna communicate, talk to people as well, reach out. You know, the thing that makes me different from everybody else is the way I talk to people. You know, my, my, my charisma. You know, how you could talk to somebody, but if you don't have the same energy that somebody else does, you won't, you won't connect with them the same way. So, for example, YouTube or anything like that, you know, if there's creators out there, then I'll talk to them, you know, try to build a connection with them, try to build a connection with, with their business, right? and try to do my best to improve their business. Um, in your cost of goods or labor, uh, you mentioned that you also have a job, but there's $14 and I think 90 cents or something. $14.50, okay. yes. Have you built enough uh, in there for you? And also, what, what, do you, what do you need most to take your company to the next level? Promotion. Promotion is what I need most of all, you know, have, getting clients, you know, having to do work, right? So promotion is what's going to carry my business, you know, promotion on social media, you know, promoting and expanding my portfolio. So my portfolio is on my work, you know, if I want to reach out to people, I need to have, good, I need to have a good portfolio, right? And that's where my work is going to be. So showing my work on a portfolio to my clients is what's going to make me, you know, stand out and grow. 
Alrighty, at this time I'd like to ask the judges to collect their things so they can head off to finish scoring, deliberate, and determine who will be our top winners for the competition. So, everyone, y'all were fantastic. And now I'd like to introduce the regional director for the South Region, Ms. Trish McGill. Thank you, Zachary, for being here today and for being our MC. Um, he, he represents an alum that's gone through Nifty, and it's always important to us to put that in front of you guys. So I want to thank him, and I also want to give him a little gift. Um, so, Zachary, if you'll come up here just real quick. It's nothing fancy, but we gave you a Nifty notebook, and all of South signed it. Ms. Lunt has it right here. And um, that's for all your future Nifty ideas. And there's a few other things in there. So I'm Trish McHill, I'm the Regional Director for Nifty South, and Nifty South is Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Some of you may, it used to be just North Texas. Um, but I wanted to take a second to recognize um, a few people who deserve some really special praise. Every year we have uh, the hard job of selecting both an individual and a corporate volunteer of the year from our region. That, those representatives will then go on, um, will be nominees for the National Volunteer of the Year Awards. And they will, um, they can go to New York and, and compete at the National Challenge there. And that, that will be in October when the students compete. So I want to kind of talk just a second about our individual Volunteer of the Year. The nominee has been a staple for the NIFTI um, organization for the past three years. She's always willing and eager to mentor, judge, or just show up and support those NIFTI events. She's acted as a conduit for other volunteers and is first to raise her hand to do the work that adds great value to the experiences for our young entrepreneurs. With stories of her own and overcoming obstacles in her life, all, looking at all of her life experience, she continues to inspire all of us. Congratulations to our Volunteer of the Year, Evelyn Sorlazano. It is because of volunteers like Evelyn that the Nifty experience is so special for our young entrepreneurs. Thank you, Evelyn, for all you have done. So if you can come up for a second. And now let's talk about the Corporate Volunteer of the Year. So it, should come, it comes as really no surprise that UWorld is our Corporate Partner Volunteer nominee this year. UWorld and their supportive programs have added great value to Nifty South this year. They not only have been a source of volunteers and connections for our staff, also for our students and our teachers, but they've offered services in the form of free test prep for our Nifty South students. They've attended our professional development sessions online for teachers and offered assistance to the teachers. They've connected them to various tools that UWorld offers. Accepting the award for UWorld is their account manager and business development, Mr. Mark Carr. I do want to read a little bit of Mark's bio. We just kind of jumped the gun real quick. Um, Mark, thank you for you all. Thank you for all the incredible volunteers that you've provided us this year. Uh, the Nifty volunteers help our teachers and our youth in so many ways. Uh, they learn about how to become more involved with Nifty and don't forget to register to be a volunteer. And he's up here to kind of point that out for you. Please. On your tables is that QR code. So if you have a chance, register to become a Nifty volunteer, and maybe you'll be up on the stage next year as the nominee for the Volunteer of the Year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Some of you may or may not know, but this is um, Teacher Appreciation Week in the state of Texas. And so I want to take just a second to recognize a really special group, because you should get way more than a week, way more. Um, I want all the teachers in the room to stand, please. Or if you're an educator, stand, because even if you're an admin, you were a teacher, you still are a teacher. We owe all we are to you. 
So do your students. Everything, everything is owned to our educators, and we don't say it often enough. We have a little gift for you, so if you'll remain standing, we're going to give it to you. It is nothing big, trust me, but I know um, that is one thing I, about, I miss about not being on a campus is being able to honor those educators. So we just wanted to say thank you so very much from Nifty. And while we're passing those out, yes. If we need more, I do have more as well, guys. And now it's a great privilege to introduce a very special segment of this morning's event. A special fireside chat and an incredible, with our incredible new board member, um, Michelle Baker. Michelle Baker is a transformational speaker and coach she, she inspires teams, organizations, and audiences to improve engagement, increase retention, and implement high performance resilience. She speaks at workshops, coaches for women's conferences and associations, professional organizations, and employee resource groups in a male-dominated industry on topics of confidence, imposter syndrome, and leadership. Described as an incredibly captivating and engaging speaker, a confident living catalyst, an authentic selling alchemist, a visionary master enthusiast, and a fear liberator. Wow, we are thrilled to receive her pearls of wisdom this morning. You guys, I am so excited about this. Uh, working with Michelle and um, Zach is actually going to be the MC. These two have a dynamic that you're really going to be impressed with. So come on up, guys. All right, so uh, we're gonna have a fireside chat in summer in Texas. I guess it's a little weird to call it a fireside chat. We had a conversation if we should call it a poolside chat, but there's no water, so it was debatable. Anyways, um, Michelle, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Well, I don't think I don't think you guys need more about me aside from what you heard, right? I think we can get started. Go ahead. All right, so I thought of some, um, some questions that um, are some things I think everyone would want to know. So let's just start off with kind of a simple one. What inspired you to become an entrepreneur, and how did your journey start? Okay, um, my journey started as an entrepreneur. My dad actually owns a business. So growing up, I always wanted to work in his business, but I was a girl, even though I was the oldest. So my younger brother got to work first, and then I finally did. Um, my parents divorced and it put us in a kind of tumultuous situation, so I didn't get to engage as much with him, but I started my own businesses when I was 13. So I started a babysitting business, I did baking, because our house had this in-law suite, and um, I sold clothes. Um, so I did that when I was 13. Um, when I was 15, the businesses started to expand greatly, and I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't have mentorship. My parents were kind of MIA, not engaged. My mom had remarried. It was just, it was one of those nightmare home situations, and we lived in an urban area. I started getting in trouble. I gave up the businesses, so I gave up my dreams. I found them later, but th my desire was to be an entrepreneur. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. So something that I've noticed just throughout being a student um, is time management. So I wanted to ask you, how do you prioritize managing your time effectively, um, and especially like when juggling that with you know, your responsibilities as a business owner? Um, time management. So this is the thing that I remind people. It took me long, 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 long time to understand this is that there is no such thing as I wish I had more time. So when you find yourself wishing you had more time or talking about I don't have enough time or just thinking time is unfair, that is a concept of the mind. We all get 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. It's the great equalizer of life. What is necessary is understanding what's most important. You will never get everything you want to get done in a day. Prioritize. What's the most important thing? Pick three, and once those are done, give yourself grace. If you get the rest done, you, you're awesome, you're a rock star. The attempt to get everything done on your list will 
have you feeling like an imposter and will have you constantly overwhelmed. Prioritize what matters most to you, pick the top three, and then whatever else you get done is gravy. So kind of to, to elaborate, so I agree with you with the prioritizing the things. How do you go about like prioritizing what things you need to do first? Um, so prioritizing, so if you heard a little bit about my background, I'll give you a little bit more expanded view. So again, I had three businesses when I was 13. I started getting in trouble because there was a lot of violence, abuse, and alcoholism in my household, and there was no nifty. So when I was growing up, there was no nifty to give me guidance on how to take my businesses and do something. That's why I volunteer, because I think this is absolutely incredible what you guys have the opportunity to do, how the, everyone gets to engage with you and change your life forever. Your lives will be forever changed for participating in this. Um, what I've learned to do now is what matters most to me. As soon as I wake up, I say thank you. I say thank you that I get to be a blessing. My focus every day is to ask, what would you have me or who would you have me to bless? And I get an answer every single morning. That's the first thing I do. Then I look at, I'm a business owner, so I've learned from my mentors, what's the quickest to cash? Because cash is king when you're in business, right? You gotta pay people, you have bills to pay, all of that stuff. So what are the things that I need to do to take care and make certain I have cash flow? And then I look at admin, so that's the track. When you're um, an employee, it may be slightly different. However, the first thing is managing your mind. So the gratitude practices that I do in the morning with the mindset, and then I go into the business, and then I make certain I take afternoon breaks to reset my mind, and then the rest of the day. I have it all on my calendar. Awesome, it's very helpful, and I think I might need to take some of that advice, honestly, too now. Um, but when faced with a major setback or obstacle you know, in your business or your life, um, what steps do you take to maintain motivation and keep moving forward? Because you explained how you've had challenges and look at you now. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, the thing that keeps me going again is purpose. So I was uh, raised to believe, uh, I was raised in church as a kid, so I always had faith. And I tell people, I don't care if you call them God, divine, Buddha, Allah, the source, the genie, the force, the, whatever you want to call higher power, understand we're not here alone. This is not magical. There's something greater than us. Um, so how I, can you restate the question? I get excited. I had to find the card again because I can't put it away. <laughs> but, um, when faced with a major setback or okay, obstacle. Okay, we're good. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's the work I do on imposter. I will tell you, just in that moment, Historically, I would have been so panicked, I would have kept talking, not knowing what I was answering, but I would have been too scared to ask him to restate the question. So that is an example of how you deal with, it's the story. Challenges aren't real, right? Remember, fear is not real. Danger is actually real. Danger means something's gonna happen, there's imminent death, there's something going to impact us or hurt us. However, we've been in a society that we want to be comfortable. Understand that comfort is the opposite of success. You cannot have great success and comfort. You cannot have great success and comfort. They do not coexist. So your ability to master your emotions, because it's just the feeling that you have when you feel uncomfortable, inconvenience, uncertain, when unplanned and unexpected things happen, it's a feeling that you start, you feel panicked, you feel scared. Your mind will then start telling the story. Training yourself that the story is not real is what is, will lead you to great success, um, great opportunity in life. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. So that's what I remind myself when I feel fear. I will remind myself everything I want is on the other side of this. So how do you get there? Sometimes I can talk myself out of it. I'm an adult and I still need to phone a friend. So know that we're, we're not meant to try to get through it on our own all the time. Having good people around you is everything. Someone you can phone, someone you can talk to, and having support. So putting those things in place. So if you have friends who, when things go bad, they keep talking about the bad, that's not a friend. 
You want people who are around you who when things go wrong, they help you find, look for a solution, how to make it better, help you to go find someone you can talk to or a resource. That's the kind of people you want in your life. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read the question once, and if you want to read it a second time again, I'll <laughs> go ahead and do that. Um, but speaking you know, of people and stuff, I wanted to ask you, can you discuss the importance of building, like building a network of you know, connections um, and partnerships, not only but in like entrepreneurship, but just in your life too? Yeah, so there's this saying that um, I learned years ago from one of my mentors, and it's your, your net worth, meaning the value of your business, your life, is your network. So it means the people that you surround yourself with. So getting clear on, I always tell people, what is your why? What, is, what, is, what matters most to you, right? Are you looking to build a business? Are you wanting to get a job and move up in your company? Are you wanting to have a family and have kids? And you know, what is this thing you're creating? What is going to make your life amazing? And most, many people term that legacy. So this is even for the adults in here, right? So this is the legacy. What is it, what's going to make life matter most to you? You might not know that when you're young, some people do, right? When you think about people like Beyonce and Gaga and Bruno Mars and Jay-Z, they knew at a very young age what they wanted to do. They didn't maybe know exactly what it would look like, but they knew what they wanted to do. So having that is very important. Question again? I actually have this one memorized. I'm not going to go back to the card. But um, anyways, what is like, what about uh, building your network? You know, what's your best yes. advice for that? So knowing that what that why is. So example of, and I'll pick Jay-Z because I always love, I, his story is absolutely incredible if you've ever read his biography that he actually, you know, sold drugs while he was rapping initially. And he took that entrepreneurial way of being and then get, went into clothes. So surrounding yourself with people, when people become artists, they hang around other artists, right? So if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you hang around other entrepreneurs who are growing their business, the ones who are, despite circumstances, are still talking about success. People Failure will always fail. You want people who talk about the struggle as if it's behind them. This happened and I'm still moving forward. That's at any level of life. Even if it's people who are employees, like if you decide I'm gonna get a job. The water cooler talk about people complaining about work and all of that, you move on to the people who are talking about getting promoted. They're talking about taking classes after work, how they're using this opportunity to leverage so they can grow their career and create more income and opportunity. Surround yourself by people who are having conversations about how to make life better. That's how you grow your network, period. So I don't care where you are, listen to what's being said and you can feel it in your body. If you feel better for having been around people, if you go out and do better things, those are your people. If you feel bad and you don't feel like doing nothing but going home and watching a Netflix series, eating some ice cream, right? Sitting on a couch, that's not a good group of people. You wanna be around people who inspire you to do great things. And then you become inspiring as well, being in that, those conversations. That's, that's an incredible network of people. Thank you. So my next question is, uh, in moments of like doubt or uncertainty, I know you touched on it a little bit, but like, what strategies do you use to regain your confidence and specifically like in entrepreneurship? Like if you have a business, you know, hiccup or something like that. Yes. So I'll give you an example. So I told you when I was 13, I had three businesses. By the time I was 15, I'd given them up. Um, we had relocated, so uh, because of financial difficulties, I was not no longer in a great school. I was in an abysmal school district. Um, but in me, there was always this thought of that I was smart. I always somehow believed that I was smart. Um, and it just kept me going. So no matter what I was faced with, I always believed I could figure it out, right? And there's actually a book called Everything's Figure Outable. So if you want to read that book, um, and that, so always knowing that even if I don't know the answer now, as long as I keep going, as long as I keep seeking, as long as I keep asking, I will always find the answer that will move me forward. Somebody will show up. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Whatever you believe, I t explain to people, our mentality, basically what we think, becomes our reality. So as soon as you start thinking and believing it's possible, 
you will be amazed at who starts to show up in your life, what starts to, what comes across your screen, you could be watching TV, you could be scrolling on you, it will show up for you. So that's one of the things is whatever you focus on, you find. So that's why the community, the connections, the conversations, what you do, um, what you're reading, all of that is going to impact your outcomes. And people don't talk about that enough. Like if you keep watching things that make you feel upset or depressed or angry, you're gonna go off on somebody. Just, it's inevitable. If you watch things that have you be inspired and feel good and you're going to find more great things in the people you talk to and the people you're around. Did that answer your question? It did, very clearly, very extensively. Um, so what role has like mentorship played um, in your entrepreneurial journey and like how have like do you have any specific mentors who have helped you succeed specifically? Yes. Oh, um, oh my God, this story. So as I told you, I got in trouble. So when I was 20, I was incarcerated. I figured out after that one experience that, you know, one of these things doesn't belong here. That was me. And so I got out and I quickly assessed and thought, because um, that's where my gift is, is, is looking at circumstances and situations and assessing. And I assessed that, okay, people who don't go back are actually people who have jobs. So I figured that out, so I went and got jobs. I did not necessarily like the jobs that I first got, because you have to check the little box to say formerly incarcerated. A lot of people say, no, thank you. So I remember I was cleaning toilets and flipping burgers, but because my focus was not the job that was I was at, my focus was not going back. The overall goal, I would do whatever it took, no matter what. And I also realized that showing up every day and doing the best I could at whatever I was given was always the answer to get to the next step. So everywhere I went, I, I acquired mentors. Sometimes I didn't even look for them. I did start looking for them later, but initially, because I worked so well at every company I worked at, someone would come and tap me on the shoulder and ask me, who are you? And I would tell them, and they were like, well, you're doing such a great job, do you know about this program? So again, you get to create what I tell people is excellence always intersects with abundance. So what that basically means is whenever you show up and you do your best at everything you're given, no matter what it is, somehow it actually opens and creates opportunity. You don't create opportunity by showing up being mediocre. So again, learning how to, in spite of whatever you're given, to keep going. So at one company, I was a file clerk. So I was in this program for formerly incarcerated, and I was a file clerk at a law office, and they had a, they had a uh, going away party for one of the partners who had went and took her MCATs, right? So those are tests you take so you can go to medical school. And I was, and they were giving out cake and all this stuff, and I, they asked me if I want a cake, and I'm listening to them, and I'm kind of in the back, and then when they're finished, I straighten everything up. And then I went back to filing or doing whatever assignment they had given me. And she called me in her office. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you go back to school, right? I was, think I was like 21 or 20. I was 22 at the time. And I was like, you just went to a lot. Oh, my mind is thinking, you just did a lot of school to be a partner at a law firm, right? And now you're going to go back to school to be a doctor. She asked me, why are you here? And I was just like, because I have a job and need to pay bills. And then she asked me a second time, why are you here? Why are you here? And I said the same answer, looking confused at why she's asking me the same question again. She asked me the exact same question a third time, but very slow. She looked at me, paused, and said, why are you here? At this point, I'm almost mad because I'm like, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, like really, because I'm uncomfortable, right? Remember, I'm 22. I didn't understand what being uncomfortable meant right then. It just made me want to fight someone because of my background. And she explained to me, you are one of, you are the most talented file clerk we've ever seen. Anything, we give you assignments just because we're curious to see what you're going to do. And you always exceed our expectations. That's the term I actually tell all my clients now, by the way. Um, but yes, so when she taught, she told me what college meant. And I went to college when I was 25. I went to Howard as a 25-year-old freshman. She explained to me what college meant. No one in my life had ever explained to me what college would do for my life or make a difference. And from there, I always learned that wherever I went, I started looking for someone who had already succeeded 
at what I wanted to succeed at, and I would ask them, what, what do I need to do to be the best here? What do I need to do to succeed here? What do I need to do to get promoted here? What are the other opportunities here? So I'd always, I always look for someone who, does, has, who is doing exceptionally well at whatever I want to succeed at. Wow. That's, wow. I mean, it's a really interesting story, and I, there's a lot in there for me to like, I'm unpack. No, I'm being so serious right now. I'm unpacking a lot of stuff that I think that I should be using in my life too. But, you know, kind of going back to what you were saying, you know, you kind of emphasize that communication is a very key part in how you've succeeded, you know, by people, you know, by asking how you could be the best possible in a certain role. Um, so are you saying that, you know, even if you're in like, you know, a lower situation than you want to be in or you're in a bad situation to not really focus directly on that situation, but focus on what could be in front of you? Yes. So wherever you are, it might not be where you want to be. And it's always the opportunity to, to create something different. I don't believe there are any real problems in life. I mean, we are in the United States, so we actually have more advantages than like 90-something percent of the world here, right? We have access to almost anything we want to access. And when you look at your situation, so if you keep focusing on the bad, it only gets worse. Whatever you focus on, you find. So instead, ask yourself, here's the judges coming in. Um, ask yourself, where do I want to be? Where do I want to be next year, next month, or even, you know, five years? You focus on that and know that whatever you are, it's only temporary. If you decide you want something better and you look for the better. You must look for the better. Awesome. Well, I think it looks like the judges are ready to come back in. So we're going to move past to the final part of the competition. But Michelle, thank you. It was yes. an honor chatting with you. Yes, thank you. Ms. Baker, thank you so much for being here. It was an honor chatting with you. And those words are very inspirational, not only to me, but I'm sure to everyone in the room, old, young, in the middle. Um, I'd like to give one more thank you to all the amazing volunteers and incredible nifty teachers and school administrators for what you did for me and for what you've done for everyone who's here today and what you continue to do for nifty students. Let's give another round of applause. All right. So now is the moment you've all been waiting for. I'd like to ask all of our finalists to join me here on the stage. All right, so I'm going to build the suspense on the results a little bit longer because I want the judges to, uh, I want to hear y'all's impressions. Is there any general feedback you'd like to give before the results are announced? I promise the results are coming. Just a few more minutes, please. I would just like to say, um, first of all, how proud I am of each of you. It takes a lot of courage as um, a young person to get up here and present um, the ideas that you all and the concepts that you all came up with to me are just mind-blowing at your age. When I was this age, I never in a million years could have stood up and, and done what you all are doing. So you should be very proud of yourselves. I just want to say uh, each one of your ideas was so relevant and so today. Um, and I think you'll see that in my feedback to each one of you. There's not a single idea that I thought, mm, we, do we really need this? So um, that means you're thinking, you're aware, and you're trying to solve for the problems around you. Um, that's what we need. It, it, it gives me, um, it makes me really proud that you are our future. Um, and uh, the other thing is I, I loved how you're thinking about future projections and scalability. Um, the only thought I'll leave you with is it's a tough world in terms of the competition uh, with all of the uh, different business ideas. So think about differentiating yourself as you go about your um, execution. But um, absolutely great morning, and thank you for um, everything that you're doing. I'd just like to say uh, everybody did a great job and great presentations from everyone. Uh, I know how it feels to be on that stage, and trust me, it's not easy. I can back that one up too.
Yeah, I mean, similar sentiments. I think you guys did a fantastic job. Really good business ideas, but I think the pre presentation skills are what's going to take you a long way. I think those are things that all of us in the business world have to do every day, whether it's interacting with clients and customers or giving presentations. So learning that at such a young age is going to be fantastic for you guys. So, so excellent job. And I would just echo everyone's comments, and I want to encourage you to lift somebody else up that's uh, also an entrepreneur, and uh, to Nifty and to all the folks that are making this possible. You all are really, really impressive. I didn't know what to expect, but it was close, and, and I can see why. Y'all are all incredible entrepreneurs, and I look forward to watching you all blossom. All righty. Thank you so much, judges. You were all faced with really enormous tasks. I'm sure it was not easy for y'all. Uh, these were all incredible presentations. I, ha I do have to build the suspense a little bit longer. But before we get to the final announcement, I'd like to make a special announcement on behalf of the Nifty South region for every one of the finalists on the stage with me. Y'all all, all, all already know, but all the regional finalists whose pitches we heard today will be invited to compete in Nifty National Youth Entrepreneurship Challenge on October 10th in New York City, like I did last year, where they will have a chance to win the championship title and additional seed money capital. We all look forward to seeing how these aspiring entrepreneurs continue to hone their business plans and pitches ahead of the national championship. Y'all are gonna have a blast in New York and congratulations to everyone here. So now, finally, we know a winner of today's competition must still be chosen. To read the results and close out our time together, I'd like to welcome to the stage Nifty's president and CEO, J.D. LaRock. <clears throat> Great job, Zachary. Can we just give Zachary a round of applause? What a, isn't, 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 he, isn't he so winning in his manner? What, what, and, and you ask good questions, too. It's a, it's a marker, one of the many markers of what the Nifty community does and means is that we have students, Zach, you're still in high school, right? That, that we have a high school student emceeing the whole competition. And I would be remiss, I thank all of our judges for being here today, but I would be remiss if I didn't also just point out again, Alberto, I, sneakerhead, right? Yeah, I remember, two years ago, I remember your pitch and it was fantastic. I'd like to call attention to this because Alberto and all of you up on stage <clears throat> represent what I remember. The reason you're, why your pitch remains in my mind two, three years later is because you came up on stage and just convey, convey, conveyed your authentic passion for something and then translated that into a fantastic idea for a business. So it's only appropriate that you're with us and only appropriate that you're an exemplar for all of our young learners here today. I don't want to belabor things too much either, but one of the things that I like to do, and I'm going around to all of the regional competitions, I do this every year, but I make some notes on each of the presentations, and in the nature of providing um, both uh, gratitude and advice, I'd like to share a few words, because no one's, <clears throat> everyone is a winner today. Everyone's going on to New York, and everyone has the opportunity between now and then uh, to take what you've done here today, which is tremendous, and take it even further. So with that spirit, let me go through each of the businesses in the order that they were presented and provide some brief, some brief comments. Thank you for indulging me. Okay, so, um, so Denamari and Brianna, uh, first of all, love the concept of the business. I have a 13-year-old daughter at home, so I know that it resonates. It's so strange to me that, that bras are not new, and yet, they're, we're, we're, and yet this issue that you have flagged is one that I know from my own daughter's experience is super relevant. So you have a really great concept, and one of the, th and one, one of the things that many of the businesses here today featured but yours did in a special way was that tie into the breast cancer community. You know, my wife has, had, has just gone through an experience with that, so I, I think that um, what you, the way in which you tied your business idea to a community of interest was very compelling. One thing that really stood out to me in a very nice way, when you were talking about your qualifications, how each of you spoke about the other person, 
That was very good. I've actually never seen that before um, in a team pitch. So I, that really won me over. I thought it was very strong. Okay, detector ray. So I told the team, I've told my team many times, how many businesses will we see this year that have AI in the concept? Because we began to see that last year, and of course we've seen it come up in a couple of instances here already. So first of all, <clears throat> there's no question that your, your um, motivation for the business is responding to a real um, societal challenge. And the way you presented the challenge uh, just rang true with a, with a, a, a deep authenticity that, that really came through in the pitch. The, the concept is great because of course, if you're someone looking to do bad, you're gonna look to avoid the obvious, the obvious things in your midst that would, like a, like a metal detector you could see, uh, and try to evade that type of security. And your concept speaks to the integration of technology into normal, into everyday things uh, in a way that really connects well to the whole big issue of the Internet of Things and where society is going. So, you know, we hear now about, you know, smart refrigerators, smart appliances, smart, this is, this is actually a smart metal detector, smart, smart door frame is essentially your idea. And so I, I love that. Um, I also love the fact that already you have a website and that you, um, and that you have a prototype um, that you displayed. Um, anything that you can do, and one of the judges asked about it, to deepen your articulation of the AI technology as best you can, I think will serve you well as you move ahead to the competition. But great, great idea. Uh, Peyton's Pastries. So when I was, when I was uh, hearing your pitch, <clears throat> I grew up in New York City, and I, I'm, uh, people from New York may know of, a, of, a, of a, an ice cream chain called Big Gay Ice Cream, um, which seeks, as your business does, to tie you know, something sweet that we all like to eat to an, to an affinity community or a cause. And so the fact that you have done that as well I think already speaks to the idea that you've latched onto a proven concept. And I can totally see how many customers, because there's you know, lots of cupcakes out there, well, there's lots of everything out there, there's lots of toothpaste, there's lots of soaps. What is it that caused people to do, to choose one thing over another? Well, you've given them a clear reason to choose your product. And so I think that is a powerful thing. A piece of advice for you, talk more about the cupcakes. You ha you've talked really well about the concept, but I wanted to know more about the, the cupcakes. Um, you know, what, what flavors do you have? What, uh, you know, do you use any special ingredients? So that's a little piece of advice as you continue to refine your, your proposal, but fantastic business. Many, okay, secret ingredients. That's another, that's an, okay. <laughs> another special advantage you can talk, to, talk about. Very good. Um, style selector. So what I really liked about your idea is, that, is how you talked about AI, but you gave a really compelling reason for not using AI. And the judge asked you about that and you answered it very well. The strength of your, of, of your presentation, the pitch was super smooth, super smooth, super smooth. Now if I can give you an advice, some advice, because you, um, is that like, time's up, JD. No more comments, I'm almost done, I promise. Um, so you obviously have a concept for your style selector. You're going to come back up on stage. You'll be wearing an outfit. Describe to your audience how your product in concept would help you pick out like what you're wearing. So we often have clothing businesses, apparel type businesses, and I often ask myself, Sometimes the, sometimes the students wear the, you know, what they've designed, sometimes they don't, and when they don't, I always, I always ask myself, why aren't they wearing what they've designed? So, so tie what you are wearing at that particular moment to your concept so people can really make that connection. By the way, as someone who has nothing but blue suits in his closet, like my solution to the problem that is a problem for me, and my solution to it is not to have an app, but just to buy lots of versions of the same thing. So I probably use your app. Uh, and then finally, uh, finally, uni, uni design. Uh, again, 
what I, one of the things I always enjoy about these competitions are uh, the creative people, the artists, who realize that their artistic talent is not just something that is, you know, fun to have, but that you can monetize it. The fact that you showed designs of your own making was a real strength of your presentation. Um, and I also liked your, um, your financial analysis as well. Um, keep show, as you move ahead, keep, keep showing more examples of the work you've done, especially if you do different types of work, so that your customers can see the range of things that you can do. Because the power of your business is your talent. So show everybody the full range of that artistic talent. Okay. Was that helpful advice, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. Thank you. So I, uh, I really am going to look forward to seeing you in the fall. Now it's time to announce the results. So our two runners up, each receiving $100 and the opportunity to compete at the national competition in New York are Bra Physics and Peyton's Pastries. Next up, our third place winner, who receives $500 and will also go on to the national competition, Detector Ray. It's hard to deposit this, so we'll get you a real number. <laughs> All right. Next, our second place winner, winning $1,000, and going on to the national competition, Uni Design. Well, we know what this means. Our finally, our first place winner for this competition, receiving fifteen hundred dollars, is Style Selector. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations to the families, to the educators who have supported these learners on their journey. I know from my experience now with Nifty over the past five years that as good as you were today, you are all going to be even better at the national competition. So I'm going to adopt the spirit of what Michelle shared, which is total positivity for you about what you have done today because all of you are moving on to the next step. All of you have the opportunity to shine. And I want you to know, and this is true, the ranking and the prizes today, how it turned out today, it's a clean slate at the national competition. We have, there, are, there are many examples where students who placed in the middle or at some other point besides first place at the regionals wound up doing really, really well at the national competition. So I encourage you to take up the challenge to continue working with your teachers and with each other to continue improving your businesses, and congratulations to you all. That concludes our competition for today. Really thanking all of you for being part of this community. Thanks to our board members and funders who are here as well. Once again, to our judges. Thank you for making this a special morning. Take care, everyone.